Hello everybody, welcome to a new Zero B song. I don't know. Hello everyone, Zeno and Zimmy here, and welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Free Houses. I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officers Academy, correct? Yes. To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. No. That is your first task here at the monastery. Once you have finished. Yeah. May I ask no. a favor of you? No, you cannot ask a favor, Freya. Yeah. The requests around the monastery. Some. Some icons will indicate your status. I experience. Instead, your quests are in red. Talk to Sative, but you know what? No. This is the mini map. I don't like how big that is. Oh my god. I forgot it does this. I really don't like it. I know what reception hall is. You don't need to do this. There we go. So we'll talk to so, you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. Never. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressfeld. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. No. I hope you've had a chance to, speak to meet about you. Anyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Yes, sadly. We'll start with Edelgard. Me? Well, some think I'm a bit dis- what else? Sorry, I'll be skipping anything. Because we're only talking about what we see here. And talking about stuff. So, Edelgard! Character-wise, I think she's not a great lord. She's not- she's not- I think she's quite bad. And I don't see the positives that people see in her. I really don't. However, gameplay wise, gameplay wise, I've I've only went through a route twice because I don't like the Black Eagles route because well routes spoiler alert they have two and they're just not good in my opinion. She's all power, but from what I've from the Time I play, I've always had her have a low hit, so I'm not really sure if it's great. Her personal class classes, because she has two, are terrible. As we'll soon learn, soon learn about what they, what their better version, their weaker versions are. Their better ver her personal classes are better version than the. Armor Knight and the Fortress Knight, giving her low maneuverability and only more power, and it's not great. Her Hero Shalik, which again, Smash Spoiled, is actually really good, but ugh. Her Battalion is, in my opinion, the worst in the game. Stat-wise, it's fine. But gambit wise it's terrible. We'll get to what gam what gambits and battalions are much later. But let's just say just to put it simply. Uh I don't like it regards. Shame. Cause gameplay wise, she is a powerhouse. Hubert, you may think his blood. Hubert is weird. He's a mage, but He's honestly the worst of the starting mages, which is weird. The good news is, is that he's probably one of few characters who actually can use the Dark Mage class at its peak, but that's not really a positive. I honestly think he ends up just lagging behind everyone. Shame. Because honestly, I ca 
kind of like Hubert's character, slightly. Minus a certain meme. We'll get to talk about that meme when we get to it. Ferdinand von Iger. For some reason, he thinks of me. His house is that of Duke Iyer, which produces. Ferdinand has the problem of if you're going to the route where with Edelgard, he has two opponents that he has to fight the spot that he tries to take over. Yeah, he has to fight with Edelgard and someone else. Yeah, not good for him, and it's a shame because I like I like Ferdinand. He's actually a pretty good ca good character, and gameplay-wise, he's actually really, really good. I've never really had a problem with him. But just in the Black Eagles route, uh, he just struggles because he cannot fit his niche. Well, it's not even a niche. He's remarkably intelligent. If he had Lidhart, Lidhart's weird. He's a healer, but he's also a bit of a combat unit. And he's really off he's, he's, the best way to put him, he's a healer with trying to be aggressive. Aggressive utility. But it just doesn't work half the time. The worst part is he of course, as you can see, this is this mainly because of his defining ability. It's not useful. Mages are frail in every Fire Emblem game. Well, this game pre pro probably be the one exception. And Linhart does not have the defense, nor have I really had him have great HP growth to make use of that catnap ability. Grad, I've never had really him doing weight at all. It's sadly useless. In the DLC, he appears along with the Free Lords and uh, if they had Mercedes, I don't think I would have as much of a problem with with it because Mercedes is just a better healer. But we'll get Linhart, which is annoying. I would rather have someone else from Golden from the Golden Deer. From the Black Eagles. I don't even get why they don't use the just retainers, because it makes more sense. But, uh Casper! He's the second son of he's over the uh, how do I talk about Casper? Casper is how I feel a lot of the Fire Emblem does think of a lot of good Fire Emblem characters should be, but they just don't end up working out due to things not working out. In Casper's case, I rarely see him either hitting or doing enough damage to see worth it. Worse, he and Mercedes have a paralogue together. Why am I bringing this up? He's the fiend opponent that is going to be easily killing him without trying. Yeah, and you, they think Casper can do this with Mercedes? No. If you're planning to go for it, you're going to have to sadly do at least a little bit of training of Casper, which is annoying. Shame, because I like Casper's character. It's just gameplay wise. He sucks. She's Count Varley's, I believe. Bernadetta. Character-wise, I don't like her, but gameplay-wise, oh man, gameplay-wise, bows, bow users, as you'll see, I have nothing but praise, and it's more of a case of, okay, who's the best one? And Bernadetta. Honestly, out of the ones that start off wielding bows, is probably third place. That is impressive. To be third place. Granted, I'm quite sure it's only four. But still, third place. And even then, 
compared, and even then, compared to what I consider second place, she can sometimes be better than him. She'll never be better than first place. Claude is just OP. <laughs> but we'll get to Claude. She has, does have one problem of she can be really stat screwed. And her defining ability is weird. But it's actually kind of... Kind of cool. But the problem is you don't really want to be taking that much damage in Fire Emblem. And early game, it's not useful. Later on, it is. Dorothea. She's a song. Dorothea is weirdly... The best way you can describe her is she's basically the siege to user of this game. Without... Without really having as much seed tomes, I, as I believe, I always keep thinking of her as one. But also, weird enough, she's the healer of the game without he, of this group, a proper healer of this group, while having a weakness of faith, which is weird. Doesn't mean she can't utilize faith magic, and honestly, I think her faith magic is really good. It's just weird. Honestly, I don't even have that much to hate about her character. I really like Dorothea's character. The only thing I don't like is her pre-time skip design, which we're seeing right now. I think it's the hat. I think it's just the hat. <laughs> Petra. To the west of Fogland, is rigid as a vast. Petra's weird, cause she has a defining ability that basically makes you play risk versus reward and you really don't want to do that. She's also weird in the fact that, as you can see, one of her strengths is flying. I never really pictured her as flying, but she's actually pretty good at it. Her main boon though is in swords and you'll probably end up training her in it, which comes in conflict, because Byleth is just a better sword user. However, that doesn't mean that you can't make her into her own thing. Petra's actually really an interesting character for me, considering she is a foreigner, and she doesn't get, like, phrases. But she's also so sincere. The only downside to her is literally the fact that if you're in another house and you recruit her late, the game for some reason gives her either gives her better stats, usually, but also sometimes gives her worse stats in certain things. Like her speed stats great. But I always see her attack being, her strength being middling. But that might just be me and how she, when, I, when I've raised her, she was much better than when I recruited her. But we'll get into the ops option, the ops of thing happening to a character in the blue lines. Don't worry. Yes. Well, ignore her. Because now we've talked to her. Uh, I believe that's Claude. Oh, come on. We'll talk to Claude Lass. I know. You don't need to show me. I'm going to talk to Dimitri. Dimitri! Hello. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the courtesy to properly introduce myself. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed, Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of course, at the Academy, I am simply a student. And I've heard word that you are to become a professor here. Delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly from your guidance. In any case, welcome to the monastery. I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Did any of the Blue Lions catch your attention? Yes. Let's talk to you first. Me? 
I'm afraid. Dimitri is really interesting of a character, but I won't spoil it. Um, when we get into the Blue Line campaign, we will. Because personal classes are the middle of the road. They're way better soldier classes, and honestly, that's the good thing about them. But what's more amazing is second personal class. Basically, if you give them boots, they can catch up to flyers. This is hilarious to me, and I don't know why. But I've also found two things interesting about Dimitri. I've always had him really good at decks of strength, and I've always had him never really need spears throughout most of the game. Whenever I need a ranged weapon for him, I give him a, a javelin. Yeah, a javelin. He never really needs anything else. Unlike Claude and Aelgard, he does not start with his personal his hero spray. But it's honestly really, really dangerous once you get to it, when you get it. And honestly, its skill rampage is a case of Yeah, if I'm up against a tough enemy, I'm just gonna spam this. Which is slightly a shame. His Battalion is... It's okay. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. But we'll get to the one that I think is amazing. And honestly... I think the only thing... I... Don't... The one thing I will say is that... Getting into other classes is a bit tough. But that's due to plot. We'll get to why in the blue lines route because that's the route we're doing let's talk about Dudu. Dudu was born in dusk he's rather taciturn but once you get to do <sighs> the game wants you to put him into an armor knight or fortress knight position i don't i don't like it you're better putting him into warrior and honestly make him more aggressive he's but it's good use of axes and lances can also make him a really great Wyvern Lord. As someone who ended up managing to get him there, which was a lot tougher than you think, but it was worth it. Because the dude became, basically became a nuke. The only downside is his res is absolutely terrible. I've never seen it get high up in double digits. Compared to other characters where even their res, even their worst, even though their worst at it is res, I've seen them get into like mid-teens, late teens. For to do, I've sometimes seen him not even get his res past the single digits. That's how bad his res is, which is impressive. As a character, I really like to do, but it's also like I don't see too much of him because he's muted, which is sad because it's interesting. Oh, Felix. Felix. He gravitates. To Felix is weird in that. His ability can literally just be, well, negated with a, with a battalion, but has literally better stats to make him much better. Granted, on a normal new game, you're probably not going to have that, but hey. He can at least save you some money in the normal new game. His mastery of swords makes him unique in a way, because it's we which is weird. Because you'd think he would be like, alright, he's okay with it, but it's not amazing. But no, because it makes cause he manages to do something manages to do very early on. Take out units without actively trying. Adding bows, giving him range to use that strength set, set because the sword's two range weapon is a magic weapon, annoyingly. 
and you don't really need to worry. Heck, put, make him an assassin, and you'll watch as he can just nuke the battlefield, especially if he gets his decks high. Which, from my experience, he usually does. Give him a Bray Blade, <laughs> watch him nuke things. Give him a Bray Bow, he'll be nuking things. He won't need to worry. You can literally put him into a corner of the map. Map, take him from one end to the other, and he will take out everything in his path. The only downside is really the fact that, well, his personality is not great. And I don't like it. In the Blue Lions playthrough, the Blue Lions, bleh, Blue Lion, Blue Lions campaign, it's it's fine. But in anyone else, he's just insufferable. It's sad, but it's a thing. He's the adoptive son of Lord Lan He has Ash is unique in that he has the funny ability of log picking. Which makes him someone you kind of want to recruit as soon as you can in the other houses, which, I mean, you can easily do, I'm quite sure. I'm quite sure his is one of the easiest ones. It's not the easiest, but hey. Ash is the second best archer, archer in, in this that starts out with a bow. What's even better, he's probably one of your characters that are probably going to become an assassin as well. And he's also pretty good at it. Plus it will give him a bit of a attack boost. Make him a sniper and he'll still be quite, quite great. If you can somehow make him a wyvern lord, as I have, oh god, does that attack decks come really hard to The only downside is that, well, you're gonna probably have to make him a thief at some point. And that makes his defining ability redundant, sadly. But, as a character, he's honestly really interesting but also really uh, saddening. Because there are Oh, Sylvain is well. To put it this way, Sylvander, is, as his ability says, a philanderer. He's a womanizer, and he hits on women. And I, I don't like his flirting. It's not interesting. To me, it's just insufferable. As a unit, he's interesting in the fact that. He can almost get into any class he wants, and it doesn't take too much trouble. The only ones he can are with ones with high bow requirements, but that's about it. You want to make him into a magic user? Go for it. Want to make him a knight? Sure. Want to make him a wyvern rider? Go for it. The only classes you can get into are specific classes that are for genders, on, certain genders only, like only female genders, but that's honestly not bad. The only problem is, is the stats aren't too great, but I mean, the weapons make up more for it. Now here's she made some Oh, Mercedes. Ah, oh, Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes. Welcome to the best healer in the game, and honestly, you can't really find anyone better. The only downside to Mercedes is the fact that, well, in this, in, before the DLC, there was no magic healer, so. If someone was out of range, they're screwed. Granted, I'm quite sure she gets physic, so it's not that bad. And honestly, 
Her recent magic's not that bad either. The downside though... Look at all the weaknesses. She doesn't... She won't ever get a melee weapon that will allow her to use a magical weapon. At least on New Game. On New Game Plus, you can easily... You can more easily do it. But it's not easy. A shame. Though again, the only other the other downside is her power log. Uh, we'll go. That will be going over in the Blue Lions playthrough. She's an interesting character in that she's probably the nicest character, but it's also a case of yes, yeah, nice, but it's also we've seen this so many times before. There's no nuance to it. So, uh, Annette. Annette is Baron Dominic's niece. She's cheerful and hot. Annette is weird. She has a rally skill, which is good. But... Her magic's weird, in my opinion. It's just... It's good, but it's weird. But what's even weirder is her he hero's relic, which I would not talk about for other characters, but for her, I need to. It's only on the Blue Lions route, and it's a weapon that isn't good for her. It's weird. Really weird. Granted, with the DLC, with the f magic flyer, her reason magic it got a big boon. So, honestly, not bad. Just weird. I like your character of trying to do stuff even if she can't really do them well. Also, I love one of her supports where she sings and I don't remember who it is. I know someone misinterprets it thinks it's like some sort of bad omen or curse. I don't remember who it is. And then uh, it's like, no, it's just a song I sing. <laughs> Oblivious. Oh great, we get talked about Ingrid. She is diligent. Ingrid Honestly, her strengths honestly paint her in the good thing where she's going to the right classes. She wants to become a Pegasus Knight, then a Falcon Knight. There's just two problems. One, she gets stats screwed really easily. And you'll hear that from a lot of people. Which is sad because Ingrid's a good character, and when she stat and she gets good stats, she's really good. Which is a shame. Ah, uh, great. You can if you want make her a wyvern lord, but again, susceptible to being stat screwed. So she ends up being better. It offer. Houses, which is weird, but what's worse, she has a paralogue with Dorothea, and that happens pretty early on, if I'm remembering. A shame, because I really like Ingrid. I really, really do. But now, okay. let's go over to the mastermind himself, Claude. Uh... Well, well, scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm Claude Von Regan. I'm from the ruling house of the Leicester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that madness. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? Yes. You, Claude. <laughs> Piqued your interest, have but what? So, Claude is the best of the three lords. <laughs> At least in gameplay. In personality, that's up to taste. To me, I love Claude. But there's, there's like, there's slight undertones. You have to notice a little to, up to get, but it's, oh, I love him. You notice, he strengthens in bow and flying. Two things that shouldn't mix. <laughs> Oh, if this is a never farm game, that would be the truth. In this game? Oh, oh boy. 
Let's go over Hero's Relic first. Fail not. Its skill is Fallen Star. That makes it... Makes Claude immune to... Makes Claude to dodge the next attack, and I believe... Next attacks of the whole turn. Someone correct me if I'm wrong on Fallen Star. I may be wrong. And I see people say, Oh, 9 charges is too much. Where I'm like, No. All you need to do is get someone, trade weapons with Claude, use rescue, pull them back, and then watch as Claude uses another bow to nuke the opponents. Because he doesn't need to worry. Speaking of, let's go over his personal classes. Yeah, he's a flying unit. He's the first flying lord in the series. Well, Lord Bite goes into a flying promo promoting class. That's canonically. His two classes are basically Wyvern Lord and even better Wyvern Lord that is broken. Y yeah. Claude is really busted. And you can nullify his weakness to archers. <laughs> yeah, he goes insane. The downside is that since you're training in bows, you probably won't be able to get him into any other class. But up to archer, which I mean, isn't a bad thing. Because it allows him to get close, close combat and that allows him to utilize bows at close combat. I don't remember what the actual skill is and honestly, just keep training them in bows and flying. You don't need to worry about anything else. Claude is the best archer in the game. He manages to kill things and he manages to hit things quite well, unless he gets stat screwed. And honestly, you can't really get anything better. He's the heir of Gloucester territory. If you haven't already picked that said, Lawrence. Lawrence, in my experience, either gets put into a magic build or a strength build, and that's because, from from how I've experienced him, he either gets a ton of strength or a ton of magic. Neither both. I've never had him be a mix. Usually, I like to put him into a physical attacker role, and that's really because, well. I found out that he's actually pretty good at horseback attacks, but also Wyvern Rider. <laughs> but then again, Wyvern Rider's kind of busted, so hey. The only downside to Lawrence is the fact that his magic's a joke. He's not great at magic, in my opinion, and, and it's mainly because of said magic. But we'll get to talk about a little nuke soon. Speaking of, Raphael. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died and despite all that... This... This guy... If how the game wants you to set him up, it's awful. Don't. Instead, focus on axes, focus on lances, and focus on flying. Raphael ends up being much better in the Wyvern Rider rule. <laughs> Rule. And that's mainly because, well, it's got enough. It's basically the armor knight, but mobile, mobile, and more aggressive. The only downside is the fact that, well, you can get shot by arrows, but you can just dismount. So honestly, it's not really much of a bad thing. Res. This weak res is sadly a thing, but hey, it's not too bad. Oh, it does. He's the second son of a merchant family. Since, if you ask me, it doesn't seem like he truly wants to be a knight. Ignaz... How do I put it? Ignaz is the worst of the archers, but he's the most likely to hit. I've always had that Ignatz barely unable to kill anything, and it sucks. He always ends up lagging behind because of it, so I end up having to give him more experience to pump him up. It's annoying because, well, if he had a 
boon in flying and a boon in like axes or something, he'd be a great wyvern rider for just a new game playthrough. But new, he's only really able to do that in New Game Plus, which is a shame because honestly, that that boom two attack ends up actually helping quite a bit, and his more agile abilities, being a flyer, end up being more useful. It's a shame. I, I like Ignatz's ca character, and the reason why I didn't talk about Raphael's is because these two are interlinked. Because Raphael is like the big brother to Ignatz, and Ignatz is like the little brother looking out for his big brother. It's, it's a nice duality, and it's honestly interesting. Makes it even more painful if you make them fight each other. Lysithia! Lysithia is the. But watch out. She gets angry if you treat her like a child. As for me, I do it on purpose. You have to make your own fun in this place, you know? Claude! Really? <laughs> but let's talk about little Miss Nuke. No, I'm not joking. Lysifia is a nuke in a ball. Want to know how OP she is? By the time we get to one of the most feared characters in game, she can one-shot them. Usually. Rarely can she not. Yeah, that's how powerful she is. Which is interesting. Lysifia yeah, has the boost of Really having the bad spells that are not siege tomes, siege spells, and honestly, that ends up helping her a lot. This gets even worse when you max out her magic. She can get plus one range in both. What's worse, get her flying, she can use the DLC fly magic flying class. And worse, that weakness to swords? <laughs> oh, that doesn't actually exist. It's only there for a little bit, and once she masters swords, she can use a special skill to, to that allows her to use magic, or if you get to swords, C rank of swords, give her 11 sword. She doesn't need anything. And what's worse, she's one of two characters, the variety one I'm not talking about, that has two crests. One of them is connected to Lawrence. Guess what? She can use Lawrence's this hero's relic, and is much better than it with it than him. And what's worse, she'll probably master most of her spells before she even gets to the time skip, making it highly probable she can use the dark fire. As a Grimori, well, she might as well have un have multiple nukes. It's honestly interesting, and her character is actually also interesting considering spoiler stuff, which is annoying. But yeah, Marianne is Margrave Edmund's daughter. And that's pretty much all I know about her. She doesn't interact much with other students. Marianne is unique. Unique in that, well, at the time of the game, she want her, the game really want her to be a holy knight, which holy knight sucked. So it was more better to make her a Grimori. Now with the DLC class Dark Fire, she might as well be better. And thanks to even with the weakened holy magic, it's honestly better, which is a shame. She's a really good healer though. So don't mistake that. The only downside. You're putting a lot of work into her. 
Hilda is the only daughter of Duke. If you look up Lazy in the dictionary, her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting it. Not too unusual for a noble, I guess. I'm sorry, I had to put that in. <laughs> Hilda! It's basically the better Elagar, in my opinion. She hits hits more often, and honestly, she really never disappoints. If you manage to make her into a Wyvern Rider, you might as well consider the game ended until Claw comes in and then the game's decimated. The game can't really stop you. Which is amazing, but it's also like, well, I've got three nukes. Hilda, Lysithia, and Claude. What am I meant to do? Huh. Don't like downsides. Really? Is... Well... The fact that you're probably going to... Have to try and reel her back to give everyone else experience. Leone enrolled because she wants to be a mercenary. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and... Leone is weird. In that, the, her defining about A, I never really had any use for. Her strengths in lances isn't too amazing, but her strength in bow is better because she gets a skill that is basically turns any bow she has into a brave bow. It's just better. The only downside is the fact that, well, being real, it takes a bit to train her into what you want, to, want her to be. And if you're trying to train her into being something, you're probably putting a lot of work. Great, no weaknesses. It's not bad. I appreciate your effort. Return to the audience chamber. How are you enjoying your time at the academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. Which house should I, will I choose? We'll be picking the Golden Deer House. As per regional tradition, many skilled many are skilled archers. Yes, a total of three. That's not many. So you have chosen the Golden Deer led by Claude, correct? Yes. Your heart has made its choice then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. My mind, my heart has not made its choice. My mind has. They are all promising youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh, I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. I am in the middle of something, Flame. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officers' Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Wait, what? Are you really our new homeroom professor? 
Is that true? You aren't quite what I had pictured. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I was sure you'd be roped into joining the Knights. Don't tell me. You chose this class just to get to know me better, right? I'm flattered, really. <laughs> Whoops. Now that you're our professor, maybe I should choose my words more carefully. I don't mind. Oh, well then, since we're pretty close in age and all, I suppose formalities aren't all that necessary. One must truly marvel at the exceptionality of this appointment. Becoming a teacher to students almost the same age as yourself. How unusual. I've heard you are a skilled mercenary, but I cannot shake my discomfort at your new position. Are you really as strong as they say? Let's see your biceps. I bet I packed on more muscle than you. I doubt that. Apparently our new professor was personally recommended by Alois, one of the knights. As far as skill goes, I saw it with my own eyes. What's more, Teach here is the child of the most renowned former captain of the Knights of Saros. I heard. There's no way a child of the captain isn't worthy. It's simply not possible. The captain? Who are you talking about? Captain Geralt, of course. The most notable captain of the Knights of Saros and a peerless mercenary. You exaggerating a bit. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think of him. Captain Gerald deserves nothing but respect. Hmm. Well, after working as a mercenary alongside a father figure such as he, I have high hopes for our professor. Just because someone is special doesn't mean their children are special too, Lysithia. Assuming that a child is going to be exceptional just because of their lineage is a bad idea. Don't you agree, Marianne? Huh? Suppose so. Well, we can find out for ourselves in battle. I can't wait to see what tactics you've learned from the captain. A battle? Shouldn't we have a welcome party or something first? I'll get the meat. How savage. I propose a nice conversation over tea instead. I am more than willing to procure some high quality leaves. Tea? You can't get to know someone over tea. There's no meat involved. It's not a party. Your common sensibilities are grating to my noble ears. Please quiet yourself. Sorry for the bickering, Teach. As you can see, the Golden Deer House is a rowdy bunch. We're not especially unified. You'll find nobles and commoners alike here. Those who are dedicated to their studies alongside slackers. But hey, that just makes your life more exciting, right? I really hope you're looking forward to the year ahead as much as I am. And that is our first look at the Golden Deer. Now we can finally reveal this is Fire Emblem, let's play Fire Emblem Free Houses Golden Deer. Get given money. Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. Won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. No, it's not. Crests are know a that. fascinating topic, but before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. And you believe I have crest? I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest 
does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest, and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself, after all. Good way you can find out. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm, what could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps... What in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. And we'll get one thing to do before we can. With each moon, professors of the Officers' Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule. Yeah, this is kind of important. We'll explore, and we'll, we'll be forced to do one seminar. So we'll get the DLC supplies. Well, we can get renowned. I'm not going. I'm only going to use this to get the sacred items, but I will not be using them for a while. This in the Shadow Lord, I will be taking, but I will not use the Chalice of Beginnings. Let me know. I will make you a quality meal as thanks for your service. I have a request. We we'll want to get these. Quest. Okay. All right. Speak to the house leader. The, new the golden deer house isn't exactly what you. After all. Yes, no, I, I know. Students and that means you can chow down with students at, as you yeah. explore. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, you can check them out to see. I hear that the bulletin board. Far be it from me to, if you don't think. Yeah. Here at the op. In other words, we can get. This is basically a tutorial. Effectively, we want to try and do as much quests and get as much points as we can. Sadly, we cannot do everything yet. Keyword, yet. We will eventually. We can't even go everywhere. Well, there's Dorothea, Hilda, and Mercedes. Lady, you know, Professor, I think I'm going to like it at the office. Professor, I've got a small favor to ask. As all right, press B to run. Uh, I kind of wish that this zoom in wouldn't happen. Let's do some gardening. Yes, let's plant the seed. But do did what did you want us to cultivate? Use of magic. And we'll wait way. until it harvests. Hello there. Well, I call you that, but I am afraid I am not a student here myself. My brother would not be pleased if he. The monastery is kind enough to provide a safe. Might you help me with a favor? All right. We've got fishing to do. So now we can do some fishing. Let's fish. We've got flames bait. And we 
have done our first fishing. Now let's we'll speak to Flane. You have helped me so much. Well, let's go do more fishing because that will help boost our professor rank. Oh, we got some really good fish. Combo. Perfect. Oof. That's nice. Perfect. There we go. One more. We can hold it off. There we go. Try and get a giant fish. Ah, we didn't get perfect, but that's not bad. Do a fish bait? Which is fine. If we prevented that, we could have probably. <sighs> yes, I know. <laughs> and this is the one thing I hate about replaying this game. Today's special. Lysifia. So a lot of people don't like this. Uh, I want to boost. Hmm. I'll boost. Eating delicious, yummy. We leveled up. Our first one. And we get more funds. Nice. I knew I could count on you. We get more plate, more time to go anywhere we want. I believe if we go up here though, I don't know if we can do it now, but if we can, great. Nope, I can't. I've got to wait. Shame. Listen to this. Then we can finish exploring. But we'll finish exploring and do more next time. Ah. So next time on Fire Emblem Free Houses, we will be doing a mock battle and probably winning. Because this is Fire Emblem. We can't lose. This is Zeno and Zuma signing out.